Shut up. All right. Now, if I was your assistant, I would have a very short skirt on, but I don't. <laughs> you see. <laughs> Woo! The off and amazing Amanda. No. I will hold this over because I don't mm -hmm. want to completely do my hair. Okay, right. and you're going to go out in the well, audience. Well, magicians have rights. Yes, you we know. do. We do. Okay. okay. I cannot see a thing. Let's make I sure. I promise. How many fingers am I holding up? Where's your hand? <laughs> none. Okay. You're holding up none. You're okay. right. Okay. Now, I right. need this audience to help us out. I don't need this hat. I already have one on. Okay. <laughs> now, let's see. We're going to take some items from this uh, wonderful studio audience, and I want you to open your purses right now. And I'm going to whisper when I come around, what is the item that I'm looking for? Now I'm getting into my meditative state of mind so that I am at one with my audience. All right. One. Amanda, are you ready? One. Amanda cannot see anything. I cannot Amanda, see anything. Amanda, using nothing but her psychic abilities, will tell us yes. what I have selected from this wonderful studio audience. Yes. Amanda? Yes. Try to get this one key wrecked. <laughs> Someone's key. Oh! <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. The awful well, amazing Amanda would like to do another one. All right. <laughs> yes, well, I'm on a roll now. You're on a roll. All right. All right, amazing Amanda. Yes. This one. Ivan, the incredible, yes. You will have to concentrate on this one. Amanda. Uh, let's see. It is a... It has something to do with the government. Yes, you're getting warmer. It has something to do with Christmas shopping. Yes. It is. You're getting closer. I have none of this left in my purse. Yes, yes, It please. is a coin. A coin. Yes. Yes. Amazing Amanda. Yes. Thank you, sir. All right. And my psychic powers, I, they are a little draining, Ivan, but I, I'm willing to do one more. All Just right. Just one more. Yes. This is tough. This is tough. Yes. Amazing Amanda. Yes, Ivan. Try Amanda. to put your finger on this one. <laughs> oh, it's a, wait. What is it? It's a, it's a, it's a ring. A ring. Amazing, amazing. Ta -da! All right. Ta -da! Fantastic. Never, never at any time did my hands leave on my arms. No, not at all. Okay. Now, now that we have your attention, why don't we do a card trick, Ivan? Yes, ma'am. That's a good okay. idea. Okay. Now, we probably need to put a paper bag over that person's head. No. Don't you think? <laughs> now, those of, those of you who've seen her wear a lampshade, you probably know that she looks pretty good with something over her head, right? What is your name? Betty Croft. Betty Croft? Yes. Betty. Are, now, this, you're not claustrophobic, are you, Betty? This is not going to ruin your Christmas, is it, Betty? <laughs> okay, Betty. <laughs> Here we go, Betty. Now. Stay I that way until January of 87. <laughs> okay. I saw her at a party once. Okay, no, now I have a deck of cards in my hand here. I'm going to pull out the deck of cards. I am going to, I'm doing this right, right? <laughs> I am going to show the card. She can't see anything, right? Right. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to show the card. This is the card, okay? Now, I'm going to, well, I'll put, I'm putting, can you hold on to this entire next, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The often amazing I, <laughs> I'm going to take that one card, one card, and that one card goes in this envelope, you see, right here. Okay. I'm going to seal it. Mmm, I haven't eaten today. Huh. <laughs> okay. That is now sealed. Now, Ivan. Yes. Show your deck of cards. All right. Now, this time, well, we'll show the deck first. Then we will take the bag off her head before she faints. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. You saw that. Okay. Now, are you ready, Miss Croft? How was it under there? Kind of nice? Never nice. mind. It's all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Now. The weather was pleasant. Now, she says the weather was pleasant. Mm. Where do we get these audiences anyway? <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to go through this deck of cards, and I want you to tell me stop at a certain point, all right? And we'll select that card. <laughs> you say stop whenever you want. <laughs> As Kirk said, sometime this month would be nice. Stop. stop. All right. Now. We're going to 
reveal the card. She's going to take the card. That's yes. right. Go ahead and take this card off the top here. And let's show that card. What card do you have? Let's show this card out there. Read what the is your card? It's the Eight of Hearts. It's it's the what? <laughs> <laughs> the Eight of Hearts. Wait a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. It's what what card do you have? Eight of Hearts. The eight of Hearts. Hearts. <laughs> well, as I said, the often amazing Amanda will now go to see what card is in here. You've never seen a grown woman cry, have you? <laughs> the eight of hearts! All right. Is it? Woo! The amazing Amanda. Okay. Come back over here. We'll talk with men who adore only obese women, Tuesday. Aren't they adorable? <laughs> Allison, you take good care of your puppy. It's times like this that really make me appreciate the beautiful things in life. It reminds me to live each day to its fullest. You know, I've learned firsthand, you can't take things for granted. Especially looking after the people you love, protecting them. What would happen if you or your spouse weren't around to provide for your family? And even though you may have life insurance, is it enough? With today's cost of living, a policy bought just 10 years ago has lost about half its value. Well, the solution is as close as your phone. Call toll-free for a free information kit about Guaranteed Life Plus. It's a term life insurance plan from Union Fidelity for people like us between the ages of 45 and 74. And it's easy to get because you don't have to take a physical exam or answer a single health question to qualify. As long as you're 45 to 74, you can't be turned down for any reason. You and your spouse are both guaranteed acceptance. Oh, and it pays top dollar benefits over and above your present coverage. But the best part of Guaranteed Life Plus is cost. $4.95 a month. $4.95. Now that's about the best you're going to find. And that won't go up as long as you keep your coverage. Guaranteed acceptance, economical rates, top dollar benefits. What more could you ask? And believe me, that money will go a long way to helping with mortgage payments, kids' education, monthly bills, anything. Call toll-free now for all the information you need by mail. With Guaranteed Life Plus, you'll find that taking care of tomorrow lets you enjoy today even more. Don't forget to make that call. Oh, you are a cute one. If you are aged 45 to 74, take Betty White's advice and call this toll-free number today. 1-800-551-5900 for your free, no-obligation kit about Guaranteed Life Plus. That's 1-800-551-5900. Operators are standing by now. Ivan the Incredible once again, ladies and gentlemen, with an incredible clash of colors on your TV screen right now, perhaps. What's your question? Uh, I'd like to ask all of them, what do you do when something goes wrong? <laughs> <laughs> you weep loudly <laughs> and throw everything in the air and use a lot of very bad language. <laughs> but if you're a magician, you normally blame your girl assistant. <laughs> <laughs> now, Billy, you invented that trick that we just did, right? Yeah. How long ago did you invent it? 1900 and frozen to death, and it was bad <laughs> everywhere that year. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Now, Jerry, you've got an optical illusion going here. Yes. Why don't you show us what this is? Well, uh, I believe they have it on the... Uh, I'll spin this disc, and if they, if they will put it on the, on the uh, monitor, they have pre-recorded this. There we go, yeah. Now, I, I want you to stare right at the center of it and keep staring at the center of it on the monitor for 20 seconds, and, and uh, I'll tell you when to look away. You keep staring right. right at the center. It's called a trizonal space warp. It's a thing I invented. It's an amplification of the normal spiral illusion. It's also a weird thing just to look at. Keep yeah, staring right. right at the center. All right, now if they'll put on the cloud picture, it looks like it moves. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> So that you understand what that was, here is the cloud picture that they put over it. There is absolutely no movement. That is a still photo. Why does that do Ooh, that? Ooh, Jerry. Well, what's happening well, in your brain? They don't totally understand it. Very briefly, I think that it's because uh, a human being is tremendously adaptive, and if you put us in a bright light or a dark light or cold or heat, we immediately try to adjust to it. 
and so we keep staring at this and the center section looks like it's going away from you and the right outside of the section looks like it's coming towards you and so you are used to that you're accustomed to it and then when you look away your senses are saying it is different than what I'm used to that uh, do you have a question yeah um I'd like to ask all of you a couple ones um the first one is um what was the first trick you ever did Billy you wanna go first uh I think it was a thing with a bit of string that uh, I, I, the trouble is I've been doing magic as far back as I can remember. So you know, that's since you were about as big as this little person. No, no, it's nope. before that. Before <laughs> that, I, I, I can't remember a time when I wasn't fiddling around doing stupid little tricks. And I think the first one that I really annoyed and got all of my relatives with was a string thing. Okay, how about you, Kirk? First trick? Uh, color changing a uh, silk handkerchief. Bought it in a magic shop 20 years ago. Now, it would be an optical illusion for you, huh, Jerry? Well, not necessarily. I, I can no longer recall. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for 20 seconds, it'll probably come back to you. Right. Young man, what's your next question? And my other question is, um, how do you guys believe in magic? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. You know, you know, if you're, if you're really after my job, just tell me. <laughs> 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 What is your name, young man? Timothy. Timothy, okay. Do you guys believe in magic? Well, you, be, you see, this is the great problem. A lot of people refer to magic, magic, uh, which is what we do, which is tricks. And then the other form of magic people often think is like psychic things that happen and uh, that sort of thing. And I always believe that in Hamlet, Shakespeare made Hamlet say, there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in our philosophy of Horatio. And you've got to keep an open mind. Someday there may be a trick where I do that and, and something's going to vanish. I don't know. But <laughs> I, I haven't found it if yet. If you do do it, will you do it in that direction, please? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, yes sir. What's your question? I was just wondering if you ever design any of your own apparatus or do you, is it all done for you? You, you design it to fit whatever you want. You mean design or build? Some of this I, meant, yeah. I meant build, yeah. Yeah, some of I, I would build some of my small stuff, like that bag, I know. Same, small, easy to design thing. Well, I had a fully equipped workshop in, yeah. in my home in London. In fact, I still have it there. And there's woodworking machine, there's metalworking machine. But very often, I, I find that I would rather make the thing myself than have to hang over a guy for hours saying, hey, uh, no, no, that should go there, that should go there, or whatever. You, you build a lot of your stuff. Everything that I do, I invent myself. All the optical illusions okay. and all the magic. Who is the greatest magician ever, Kirk? I, who's the greatest artist ever? I can't answer that question. Anybody else think there's the greatest ever? Yeah, you, you can't specify. Okay, all right, we're going to take a break. We'll come back. I know we've got another question out here. You're just dying to ask a question, aren't you? Okay. <laughs> all right, well, we'll come back and hear what you have to say, okay? We'll be right back. <laughs> Wednesday, we'll meet local entrepreneurs, those who ignored the risks and created the business of their dreams. Happy cat, happy you. See what happy cat can do. Makes cats happy, happy too. Happy cat, happy you. Purina's Happy Cat brand cat food makes cats happy because it tastes so good and it's so good for them. Doesn't that make you happy too? Happy Cat, happy you. See what Happy Cat can do. Happy Cat, happy you. Yeah. My life is my life and it's different than the way you were brought up. You were brought up in a stable family where your parents were married and, and your holidays were the same every year. The same people got together, you played the same games, sang the same songs, and that's not the way it is for me at all. And I don't think that the way I've been brought up or my atmosphere or my holidays, the way I spent them was bad. It's just the way it was. Holidays can be stressful for adolescents and teens. Divorce Lifeline has programs to help. There's only one thing you've got to do. Glamour mouth, now to be all over time. You've got to have fun. Let me get this to you. Lots of fun. Why don't you take off your clothes? <laughs> Here comes the new Hollywood Square. That's a good name. The show where you expect... Yeah. ...the unexpected. Don DeLuise's jockey shorts. <laughs> now the game's all here. Oh, we're friends. We eat together all the time. For stars, surprises, and lots more, it's Hollywood Squares. Weekdays at 3 on King 5.
King Broadcasting wishes you the safest holiday ever. Over the past two years, we have all enjoyed safe holidays, partly because of the CareCab project. If you drink during the holidays, please don't consider driving. If you drink, care enough to call CareCab December 24th and 25th from any public place in King County. Call 821-1122. Lou Please join me and my co-host Ed McMahon, Marilyn McCoo, Jane Kennedy, and Alex Trebek. Lou Rawls Parade of Stars Telephone for the United Negro College Fund. You'll be enjoying exciting performances from stars like Frank Sinatra, Aretha Franklin, Alabama, Natalie Cole, The Commodore, The Judge, even Alan Pitt. You'll be hearing from Bill Cosby, Bob Hope, how's about Diane Carroll, Patrick Duffy, and George Burns. Remember that Saturday, December 27th, a great show, a great cause. We'll see you there. Here on King 5. We're talking about the, I think it's the David Copperfield show with the two rubber bands where he, and we videotaped it because my nephew was trying to figure out what it was. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we play it forwards and yeah. back and we'd stop it in the middle, we still couldn't figure it out. Mm. So now you're going to drive me crazy it's with it's another it's trick, it's right? It's in volume seven of the Tarbell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> First of all, the question is, you know what that is, and the chances are that anyone says anything, they say, my godfather's is a hedgehog, it's a porcupine mummified, but here's the point. Whatever it is, if you squeeze it tight that, they do tend to mate rather quickly, <laughs> like so. Now, if I put that one there like that and ask you to hold that one tightly in your hand, close your hand over, hold your hand over there. Now, if I do like this, it should bank in there. Open your hand, and you've got oh. two. Right. Now, you did that rather well. Hold, well, hold both of them. Wait, hold the it. amazing Amanda is even more amazing than she knows. <laughs> yes? I got an extra one here, right? Yes. So if I put that inside, now I'll show you how this is done, and if you like it, if you don't like it, I'll keep going until you do like it. <laughs> I put that in there, like that, and I do that, open your hand. And you see. <laughs> now, you know that this one does not actually leave here. No. So if I take that one and do like that, let me show you how the trick is done. We put those away like that. Now, how many are there? I'll there's one in there. There's one. You, I've given you a little bit of a chance. Yes. But watch this, because my hands are empty. Oh, that's, that's the equal opportunity one. We forgot about that. <laughs> now, do you remember the size? What? Show me the size of your finger. The size. You were right that way. Yeah. Uh, do you think it was possibly as big as that? No, I don't think so. Yeah, and it's close <laughs> to. Oh, oh, oh all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was. Now, I mean, I was, I was present at all times during that. And you I, were. You were. Thank God. If you suddenly left, it would have been fine. I don't know how it was done. Now, okay, can you do that with BMWs or <laughs> Porsches? Uh, <laughs> can't do that. Uh, uh, this is Mose. Hello, Mose. You're a friend of Timothy, huh? Uh -huh. What's your question? Where do you get the ideas? <laughs> Good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I could knew because then I would be able to get more ideas. Uh -huh. uh, it's just a, it's one of those amazing things. You suddenly think, hey, wouldn't it be funny if we changed those shoes to a different color, you know? And then you sit down and figure out how to do it. And then after you've made the thing up, you find that nobody's interested in anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Free association. Uh, that's a one way of it. Yeah. Well, uh, Jerry, you want to do a, some more magic for us right. here? You've uh, got some more illusions? Uh, let me uh, bring forth a point first, that, <laughs> that we are fooled because our mind is working right, and we constantly, incessantly fill in the other side of everything. And some of you have filled in something about me that isn't precisely what it seems. I'm 68 years old. I am farsighted. I do wear glasses, but I happen to have on contacts, and there, there are no glass in these frames. <laughs> now, you see... Uh, y your mind didn't make a mistake. Uh, it came to the wrong conclusion, but it came to it for the right reason. Uh, let me real quick do, uh, let me do a thing. Uh, this isn't magic, but uh, if we see it. Uh, <laughs> Amazing Amanda could do that too, Jerry. <laughs> right. When I perform at the Magic Castle in Hollywood, sometimes I say, I'm an Oregonian. We're supposed to perpetuate the myth that it rains there all the time. In fact, the cards even warp. <laughs> okay, yeah, see, see, yeah. Wow. Whoa. Ah, ooh. One more quick thing. Okay. Magic's everywhere, isn't it? <laughs> this looks beautiful. Yeah, this is wonderful. Yeah. It's one of those extraordinary things. Just isn't that wild looking? Oh. oh wow. Thank you very much. That's great. Oh. Thank you very much. Oh, that is absolutely fabulous. Yes, sir. What's your name? 
Eric Swenson. Eric, what is it? I'm interested in what Jerry has to say about what his illusions and his tricks of the mind are telling us about human psychology. I know you've uh, uh, broached the subject, but right. could you hold forth for a moment or two on well, that? Well, just very briefly, uh, it's, again, we, we know how the world works, and uh, when we do magic, we are trying to do something that looks like it violates the way the world works. And if we were a dullard and, and uh, somebody produced a rabbit right in the middle of the table without any cover, we could easily say, oh, the hand is quicker than I. But we are intelligent, we're knowledgeable, we know how the world works, and therefore when we see something that seems to violate it, it looks like uh, magic to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, is this something you're pretty well born with, or is it something you learn? I know one of you started as a very small child. Uh, do you all do that? No, it varies. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I don't think that you're born with it. I think that you acquire it. It's like learning to play the piano. I suppose there's a, uh, an ability for musical, uh, a slight right, ability. Right, you have a gift. And you have a little bit of a gift for some things. I suppose a, a gift for cheating and lying. And <laughs> oh, <that's> <laughs> cheating. A, a tremendous, a tremendous amount of, of things. If one is going to be a, a, a wonderful juggler, they have to be born with some innate ability. Right. But you can take, instead of sitting and watching, uh, whoops, I can't say that, watching television hour after hour. <laughs> well, no, but if, if you were interested in gardening or interior decorating or writing short stories or anything, and if you concentrated on it, and used your imagination and tried to think of ideas, ideas, and tried to get your environment to stimulate you to think of ideas. Would magicians be good writers or artists or musicians? Depends. Do good, you know that talent's transferable to something yeah, else? So to some degree. There's a creative talent that, that goes... Comedy, maybe? <laughs> Perhaps. Yeah. I, think, I think one of the, the best tricks I've ever seen is, is, I think, was it Copperfield who went through the Wall of China? Now, is that optical illusion, Jerry? Uh, a poor person to ask the question. No, it's, it's, a ma it's a magic trick. It's, yeah. it's, again, it's... It's doing something that looks like it violates the way the world works. And the I wouldn't call it an optical illusion, though. No. What's the best trick you've ever seen? Can't answer no. that either? Hard. It's That's too hard? Yeah, because there's so much of it that's yeah, kind of wonderful. There, there are different categories, you yeah. see. I mean, if you said, what is the best stage illusion you've ever seen? What's the best sleight of hand thing you've ever seen? Uh, it, it's the categories. The funny thing, you mentioned the Great Wall of China. I was up the Great Wall several times, and one time I had a video camera, and I'd forgotten to turn it off. And as I'm walking along, I'm getting pictures of the ground that I'm walking on, the Great Wall, and I'm getting pictures of the wall. And uh, David got the, these pictures because he had like 20 minutes of what the wall looked like before uh -huh. he'd ever been there uh -huh. from my video, which was totally accidental. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. Now, you're, you're flying home to Los Angeles tonight. You'll, you're yeah, appearing I'm at the Magic Castle in LA in Hollywood. At 8.30, I'll be on the stage in the Magic Castle. E every night you're on? Not well every night this week. Yeah, every night this week. Yeah. Okay, the Magic Castle, a fun place to go in Los Angeles. And Jerry, you're going back to Oregon. Right. Okay, Jerry Andrus and we, Kirk. We're going to see you continuing. Uh, right. Is it over at Bellevue Square at Jungle Gym? Mm-hmm. Where are you there? You're on Friday nights from seven to nine. In January. Right. In now. January and Saturday from one to three. Right. In, in right. December, I'm there Saturdays and Sundays. And okay. then January changes a little bit. Fun thing to do if you're out doing, well, if you haven't finished your Christmas, Christmas shopping, shopping yet. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't finished it. I need two more presents. Got any ideas? Call me. No. Uh, all right. Thank you very much. Billy McComb, Jerry Andrews, and Kirk Charles for being here today, for being simply amazing company. And we're going to take a break. We'll be back. Join the King family and good company for a Christmas party Thursday. Operation Emergency Center needs your help now more than ever to continue its food bank and clothing operation for people in need. Call 725-2100 and contribute today. Well, Dad, I like it. Your daddy loves Old Spice. I love the smell of my dad. You put the ribbon on. This Christmas, people all over America are giving the men in their lives the classic scent of Old Spice, the clean, fresh, masculine scent so many women love. I love the smell of Daddy. And so does Mommy. For a Christmas gift he'll love, give him Old Spice. And if he likes the scent of leather, give him Old Spice leather. No. 
soaking. Good morning, I'm Don Madsen, the King 5 Newsroom, with some of the stories we're working on for the 5 o'clock news. One year ago today, a jury convicted Ruth Neslin of murdering her husband and getting rid of his body. Today, we'll learn what she's been doing since then. How are Lockheed workers making ends meet a month after being locked out of work? We'll check that out. And this is crunch day for holiday shoppers and travelers. We'll check and see if sea tax are jammed as predicted, and if local retailers are making a killing this year. All that and more on our next schedule news at 5. Christmas Day can be very lonely for people who cannot be at home with their families, or those who have no families to go home to. Hi, I'm John Cornell with The Holiday Project, asking for volunteers to visit with people in hospitals, nursing homes, and other institutions this Christmas. Those interested should meet at noon on December 25th at the Court in the Square, located at 401 Second Avenue South, near the Kingdom. Parking is free across the street in the Diamond parking lot. Make this holiday special and give yourself as a gift to someone who cannot be at home on Christmas Day. For more information, call 467-3068. You know, I was kind of depressed one Christmas, and I did that. And I tell you, I've never felt better so just going around visiting people and singing to them. It All was right. just a great thing to do. Tomorrow, we're going to have a show with featuring men who love fat women. And then on Wednesday, entrepreneurs, people who have mixed inventiveness and perseverance and come up with a successful business idea. Now, if you're at home during the holidays and your teenagers are driving you crazy, or if you're driving them crazy, everybody, come on down next Monday. we got a show for you. Have a nice day. See you tomorrow night. Bye-bye. While in Seattle, some good company guests enjoy the hospitality of the Western Hotel. Refreshments for our good company studio audience were provided by Gay's Bakery, Seattle. Coffee provided by Stewart Brothers Coffee, Seattle. Set flowers provided by Plants and Fleurs, Seattle. Miserable cold, huh? You know I feel bad when you feel bad. So I brought you this new Neocitron cold medicine. It's strong medicine for your poor stuffed up nose, and the sneezing and those awful aches and pains and fever. But the best part is Neocitron's hot and lemonade. So it'll feel nice and soothing going down. You know, I think you're going to feel better real soon. New Neocitron cold medicine, a little warmth for your miserable cold. Hi, I'm Don Porter, King 5 News. You know, one of the best things about living in Seattle is the Woodland Park Zoo, even in the wintertime. Our local zoo is home to over 30 species of endangered animals, including... This is Charlie Rose. We'll have the latest developments in the White House arms scandal and a talk with actress Leave Ullman tomorrow on the CBS Morning News. Stay tuned as a vow of silence makes a priest the target of political assassins on The Equalizer, next. Don't leave town. Thursday. I don't belong here. It's wonderful. Going somewhere? When you take a musical journey. Where am I? Through the twilight zone. Friday on Dallas. You're having me followed? I want to know what that charlatan is up to. I'm going to bring them to their knees. I'm starting to get real worried. Yeah, so am I. And on Falcon Crest, a marriage disintegrates. What have I got? No trust. I've wasted enough time on your problem. Wasted? I guess the perfect marriage isn't so perfect. Good evening, I'm Aaron Brown in the Eyewitness Newsroom. Coming up at 11 o'clock tonight, Seattle police go undercover dressed as punk rockers and find what they describe as an assembly line drug ring at a Seattle dance club. We'll tell you more about it at 11 tonight. We'll end the program tonight with John Procaccino's review of Song of the South, old time Disney back again. In between a full night in sports, the weather and more all at 11 on Eyewitness News. I've been up and this year.
Everything you want is here. This for him and that for her. Presents are abundant.